Hey folks, it's Mark and Bob with Fire Mountain Outdoors. Welcome to episode two of the Epic Build Series. That's right. A few months back, I issued a challenge. I put together this rifle. I said, hey, let's make functional artwork yep. and make something better. And I think you achieved that. You know, I, I, I don't know if it's better, but I really, really like it. You know, um, I wanted to build an AR for a wife, for my wife. Um, you know, our wives are great, and they put up with a lot of our stuff, and they put up with us buying a lot of guns, and and we as guys tend to want to involve them a little bit, and then we'll, we'll build them a gun or something to, to interest them, or, or show them that, hey, we don't just love our guns, we will build a gun for you, and, and so I could just build uh, something to put some pink furniture on it or something, she don't like pink. But she's uh, she's um, she's a she can actually weld. She's into she welded the uh, the elk. Behind she us. welded the elk behind us. So she does that kind of stuff, and she really appreciates the steampunk style. And so I decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build Jennifer the steampunk AR-15, and I want it to be fully functional and yet cool enough that it would match our home decor in case it could be a wall hanger. So. It took me a long time, and a lot of different stuff was going on, and if people stick around after the break, I'm going to go piece by piece on what I did to this, and then we're going to go out to the range and actually shoot the thing and see if all of this contraption that we cobbled together actually fires and works, so stick around. Let's take a look at this build. First, I'd like to explain something. This is a art piece. This is a form over function piece. Now there's a lot of stuff that happened on this build that you wouldn't do to a duty weapon or a tactical weapon or something you use for home defense. This is an art piece that I made for my bride. It's, it's not going to get a lot of shooting, but it's going to get a lot of looking. That was the primary thing. I wanted a look. I wanted a feel. I wanted a motif. So everyone that, that will look at some of this stuff and go, well, I wouldn't do that to my duty weapon. The answer is, duh, no kidding. But it will make a very cool mantelpiece, and that's what the purpose was here. So now what I want to do is go from the muzzle to the buttstock and talk a little bit about each particular item. Now, at the muzzle, I used a GRG Krinkov muzzle device that was just attached to a regular M4 5.56 barrel. The reason I went with the GRG is because it's big and ominous looking. I don't know what the bore size, what bullet this thing is shooting, but it's something big and it's something impressive. I like the look of this sticking out the end. As we move inward, we go to a very unique part of this build, and that would be this copper handguard. I fashioned this from ACR tubing that I got that was scrapped from a from my job. I do heating and air conditioning for a living. This ACR tubing is something that I work with every day. I'm very comfortable with working with copper. I like how it looks. I like how it takes a patina. This is inch and five eighths OD. I have some quarter inch copper tubing that I wrapped around in here. Now you're gonna notice some of the wraps aren't even. And the reason is I am trying to eliminate some counter sympathetic back EMF polar dynamo action that could actually endanger the shooter. So we had to have a little bit of discrepancy in the parallelness for safety purposes. Uh, I learned that from Tesla. Down below here, I have a Midwest Industries rail section that I ground a fit in between. It was really an afterthought. Uh, attached to that rail section, I have a L3 Insight Technologies WL1AA light. You gotta have a light. Now all this copper goodness attaches to the firearm with a leftover cast off little shorty quad rail from a pistol that uh, I put a different rail on. I kept that spare and that copper just fit right inside. I bolted it to the copper with uh, some bronze bolts. It works really well. It's got a little Frankenstein carriage bolt steampunk vibe to it. On the left side, I attached a green laser. Why? Because steampunk. It needed a laser. 
uh, adds a certain little character. There's a there's another doodad hanging off the side. Could have a variety of functions. This one is actually functional. I plan on zeroing it in at 50 yards. Uh, all you tactical guys that use a C-clamp stance, uh, it would illuminate your wrist. But with a traditional old school FUD underhanded old school uh, stance with your hand underneath the uh, hand guard, it, uh, it shoots right by your left thumb and illuminates the target well. Moving rearward from the handguard, we just have a standard aero precision upper. It has a mil spec charging handle. I soldered on a piece of plumber's tape onto the ejection port just for some steampunk vibe feel. I think it added some character. It houses a standard Palmetto State Armory Premium Bolt Carrier Group inside. If we move down below, this is where the action's happening, folks. This is the lower. This is a Daytona Defense and Tactical skeletonized lower. You'll notice there's some other stuff going on. I have a standard mil spec lower parts kit in there, but there's some gears going on. Now, those gears, I just bought them off of eBay. There's a guy in Russia that parts out clocks. I bought a bag of gears and I and I sorted and fitted and and uh, made those gears fit in there. I was able to put those in between the sides of the receiver and the trigger pack. I also added one on the safety on the external of it. I think that added a lot of vibe. I have uh, I have some reservations on the reliability there, but we're going to find that out in at the firing range. All of my function tests show that those work good and I don't have any trigger pin walk. Time will tell on that. If we look at the pistol grip, that is a Pierce edition. That's a 1911 grip style that I added. I needed some wood on this. So I wanted the angle and the look that just fit really well. I had some takeoff walnut 1911 grip panels that I added. Uh, one thing about the Pierce grip is whatever panel you're going to use, you're going to need to modify to clear the safety and to clear some edges. And that just, these were takeoff panels. I was able to distress them, uh, make a match. That worked really well. Uh, on the trigger guard, that's also a Daytona Defense tactical uh, skeletonized piece that I think fits really well with the thing. Now, moving on rearward, this is uh, this is the buttstock. This is this is what took all the time. I spent a lot of time trying to actually create a wood buttstock because it needed two things. I needed a compass and I needed a thing that that told time. Those were the prerequisites. And I couldn't find anything that was going to work. I tried to fashion my own and I got tired of being Geppetto and trying to whittle pieces of wood and make it happen. So I saw this Luth AR Skeletor buttstock and I says, you know what? That fits my vibe. That fits my motive. That's going to work. So I took that Luth AR and I found a copper compass and I found this cool uh, watch. I found a piece of copper sheet metal that was left over in scrap. I cut it and bolted it into the Luth AR stock, drilled a hole for the watch so you could see the workings clear through it. I think that adds a cool touch. I soldered on some more plumber's tape for tabs to secure the watch, and I soldered the body of the compass right to that copper. That fits well. I think that really, really sets this off. Uh, it actually holds and keeps time. The watch works. You can wind it up. It's a cool thing. One note about the finish. The finish on this rifle is uh, is really pretty basic. It is some Krylon hammered copper. I, I coated everything in, in hammered copper and then let that cure and then uh, just fogged everything with some high heat black let that cure and then just came after it with a scotch right pad and added the, the distressed look. And topping the build off is this Rock River Arms cantilever mount. I chose that because uh, it was robust, it's pretty big, it's pretty heavy. I wasn't going to put it on any of my other firearms and I have this uh, pretty cheapy Walmart center point uh, scope that wasn't going to go on any kind of a duty firearm. It always seemed to work on a 22 like the one I got it on on trade and it's got lots of protrubances. It's got numbers and indicators and it's got 4 to 16 power and and all sorts of steampunky looking stuff 
that really fit the look and the cosmetic appeal that I was looking for. So I wasn't afraid to scuff this thing up and bolt it on top. So let's go take this thing out and function test it and see if it actually shoots. Well, here it is, the steampunk gun. I just, just finished up. My hands are still dirty from doing the last little bits of building on it. And uh, now we're coming out here just to function test it. We got a little break in the weather. So I just want to make sure that the blaster works. The purpose of this is functional art. I want to make this work and make it a functional AR-15 that just looks badass. A functional steampunk gun. So without further ado, first shot fired. It works! Everything works! A functional blaster from way back in the future. How cool is that? It works, Bob. That is one fabulous, fabulous, fabulous AR-15. But hey, it was fully functional. And it, and, and I'm, I'm happy about that because I had lots of concerns. I got these gears that, that are in the, the whole trigger mechanism stuff. And so you have reliability, wonder if stuff's going to interfere. It always passed as a function test when I was building it. But it worked and none of the pins walked. Nothing, nothing happened there. Um, and it shot and shot and shot and shot. Yeah. It, you know, you've got, you know, a freaking skeleton watch. In it and it's working and it's on time. You got the compass on this. This has got Ralphie May would be so happy. It's got a <laughs> compass in the stock and a thing that tells time. You know, we've got we got laser things. Uh -huh. It's got a got laser thing, flashlight, and a shiny light thing. Supposedly, it, yes, yeah, right there. Yes, a shiny light thing. So it is fully functional. And this could be a wall hanger. So here's my intent. My intent is to make a plaque that this hangs on the wall. And, so, and this is a piece of art. And, and what I want to do is have uh, take the bolt out and have the bolt and a magazine at a separate location. So this is totally inert. But uh, somebody who knows where the bolt and the magazine are, just a couple of steps away, you can quickly throw the bolt in, load the magazine, and it went from a totally inert object to now it's functional art and it's ready to go. Right. You know, I just just big props to you on this. You know, I've been coming up here for months and months and months and months. The stuff's been hanging, <laughs> been stuff's painted, drying. yeah, drying. You know how you came up with this patina and this paint job? I want one built for myself now, just to turn into a lamp. Well, now you upped it one because I built this. In the meantime, I gave you some extra time. But you knew I was going to build this. What do you What do you do in the meantime? In the meantime, I I, I figured you were going to do something pretty badass. So I, you know, to match the polished rifle, I made a polished pistol, and I got the stabilizing brace on it. And yeah, it's just it kind of matches it. You know, we use the same kind of receiver on right. this that you used on this, the Daytona Defense and Tactical. Yep, and uh, it just turned out kind of cool. Just a, a cool little thunder beast. It that is cool. And that, yeah, I. I, I concede. I, I, I'm throwing in the towel. I this is if I wanted to build a piece of functional art, this is what I would have built. This is just, this is just an amazing. I, I can't. Amazing I can't lie. I'm proud of it. I'm really proud of how it turned out. Uh, conceptually, all coalescing and and making it. Now, once again, folks, this isn't this isn't a battle weapon. This isn't my first AR. This isn't the go-to AR. This isn't something that I'm going to take to the sandbox and fight with. This is, hey, I have plenty of other ARs, but I want to build another one. And uh, I want a very unique uh, range toy that's functional um, but looks badass. Yeah, and that, that's exactly where we came from on this project. Yep. Know, we've got a battle firearm set aside. I mean, we've both got those dedicated for that. But these are strictly for art purposes. and Exactly. You know, something to show off during barbecues on Sundays, you know, and all the friends family come out and it's like you want to see something cool check right. this out yeah it's something it's something cool just like that would be cool uh hanging on the wall this is this is very cool hanging on the wall too 
Yeah. Well, good job. Good well, job. thank you. I appreciate it. I uh, hope you viewers liked it. If you did, please like and subscribe. Please subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. That helps uh, fund all of the silliness that we embark on. That's right. Make sure you follow the four basic safety rules. Stay safe. Shoot straight. Like and subscribe. Catch you on the firing line. Thanks for watching.